Okay, everybody, you're not imagining things. I'm back. It's Lisa Copeland again with another episode of Big Sellers. And today is no different. I mean, you know, this woman is somebody who inspires me. She's a, a leadership thought leader, international speaker, absolute rock star, amazing human being, and happens to be a very good friend of mine, Holly Dowling. Say hi to everybody, Holly. Hey, everybody. And Lisa, so great to be with you. It's I awesome. know. I've missed your cute face. I know. We've had some good stories over the years. <laughs> I know. Exactly. I mean, we need to like, you know, get some of those stories going again. But girl, I cannot keep up with you. You are everywhere. You are rocking the stages. You're rocking around the world with major corporations. You know, you are the go-to when it comes to leadership development in the C-suite. So I want you to tell my audience about oh, Holly Dowling. Thank you. And you know what? I got to say, and it's kind of like, I know this sounds cliche, Lisa, and you know this from the minute we ever met. I feel so blessed and privileged and so honored that I get to do what I love. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm doing what I love. And yeah, I'm all over the world, but I'm serving people. I'm serving leaders and really helping to be a messenger of, I mean, like I say, Lisa, to be honest, and for everybody listening, it's really common sense. It's just not common practice. None of this is rocket science, right? I mean, right. at the end of the day, it's not. We're humans. We just need to be reminded of that. So, so tell us about the kind of companies that you've worked with. What, you know, is, is it a corporation in crisis where they're bringing you in or are they bringing you in, you know, once a year for their, their, their sales retreats or all the above? How about all of the above? Because I got to tell you, this is funny you ask. I have some amazing clients, right, all over the world and from everything from retail to consulting firms. I mean, you name it across the gamut. There's no certain and even teachers in school districts. Um, but to answer your question, I have to tell you that I just had a client inform me that I had just delivered my 78th speaking engagement for them over seven years. Wow. Yeah. So it's all referral business. It's, and it's not crisis. I think what happens is that when you give people an opportunity to just pause and kind of just take a moment in the hamster wheel of life, whether you're an individual contributor, Lisa, or you're a leader or a CEO of an organization. I mean, I see that even in CEO, C-suite. When you give people that little bit of time to just pause and kind of go step back, reset, rekindle their mission and refocus on why they're even here and what they're doing, I think that's what people need and are wanting more than anything. And then that kind of like becomes viral. Next thing you know, it's like, can you come back and do that again? We have another group. We have like thousands of people that are going to be together for an event. And I'm always like, it's so interesting, right? Um, yeah, and they, I mean, they call it the Holly thing, Lisa. I have to say we were going to put it on the website. We're like, people go, can you just come do that Holly thing? And we're like, what is that? You're so infectious. You know, the first time that you and I met several years ago, I mean, we just became friends instantly. You're the most, one of the most uh, infectious in a good way, people that I've ever met on top of the fact then, you know, you, you add that with your expertise on leadership and, you know, and you're very good at galvanizing teams. And you know, what do you think Holly is the number one problem today in business? Ooh, what a heavy, good question, oh, Lisa. Girl, I didn't Nothing tell like you they were coming, did I? No, you didn't. I knew it was the art of the big sell, but I didn't yes. know it was the art of the big sell. But we're here to solve problems. I know. You know what? I, I, I honestly think at the heart of it all, we have become, and I'm going to just pardon myself in the forefront. I don't ask for permission. I'll ask for forgiveness for what I'm about to say. I think we're so consumed with strategy that we are treating human beings in the business world as knowledge banks. And we have forgotten how to treat them as human beings. Wow. So, so I know that you work a lot with the C-suite and is, you know, so is, is that some of the, you know, so when you're in there and, you know, you're talking to them, you're working with them. I mean, are you reminding them that their people are not chattel, that they are human beings and they're not just, you know, a strategy to, you know, to increase ROI that they're human? Yes, my dear. And as a matter of fact, I'm having a moment as you're asking me this and we're talking about it, just in an event for a global group of CEOs and founders um, of several companies. And it's so interesting, a pin could drop. And afterwards, the line and of individuals, mostly predominantly men, standing there to say, I had one man with a tear coming down his face and said, as soon as you were done, I ran outside and called my wife and said, I needed this more than anything. It's time to make a change. I'm selling my company. Wow. And I'm starting the company of my dreams. And I'm telling you, it's not about me. It was about knowing that what people need to be reminded of, even to what you just said, leaders at that level, 
remember it's a it's privilege. It's lonely at the top. I mean, it is lonely to be a leader and it's lonely to know who you can trust. Yes. And so, you know, the burnout's very high at the top. People don't realize that in, unless, unless you have sat up there in that ivory tower by yourself, it, it's tough. And so to have somebody like you, what I would not have given to have somebody like you a couple of years ago, you know, that I could consult with, that I could trust, that I could confide in, but, but somebody who had the skill set to look down from a 10,000 foot view and, and give me the guidance that I needed, you know? Yeah. And that's hard. Well, and I think it is hard, but I think you just pegged it. It's really about who can just understand the shoes I walk in, understand what the, the dynamics of leading a big time billion dollar companies out here. Right. And still they're human. We expect them to be God. You're not God just because you're a leader. And yet you're still looking for tools and tricks and trip, you know, tips. Give me something to keep leading. And as I say, leading is a privilege. What people need from you more than anything is give them the gift of coming back and rekindling why you hire them to begin with. Right. right. You know, it's kind of like the old ad. I call it the penny. Lisa, you're going to love this. And for many leaders, this is a moment, but I'm like, right, we hire all these brilliant people. They build their executive teams, right? You have these board of directors, executive teams, and then it trickles down to thousands of people. We're hiring brilliant people. And yet at the end of the day, we take for granted so much of what we hired and all we're focusing on is what's not there. We spend most of our time and energy saying, this is why we hired you. Now we want to fix or put in all the stuff that wasn't there to begin with. I call it the shiny penny. You know, you're walking down the street and you see a beautiful shiny penny and you pick it up. And the closer it gets to you and the closer your eyes get to it, the more flaws you see. Oh, it's true. Death, right? It's and it's even like that in our personal life. I mean, I always say I'm honest and say, we got to start living back even behind closed doors, looking at the people that we love as the shiny penny and the gifts and the brilliance that they bring to this world, rather than kind of forcing in what was never there to begin with. Oh, God. see, I, this is why I love talking to you, because I'm inspired every single time. Holly, when did you fall in love with, with leadership? Because I think that's a very, I think it's a special calling to work with leaders, to be a leader of leaders. You are the first person in my entire life that's asked me that question. And I, I love, love you. I love you. And I love <laughs> that you just asked me that because I have to tell you, there wasn't a moment that was the revelation. It's been a series of ongoing. I've always been passionate about working with people and always saying, I want to inspire people to find those gifts inside and, and explode them. And how can you become extraordinary? But Lisa, what's happened is that over time, things kept pulling me into the leadership space and one day I was like, I walked into a room and I was like, I'm not going to talk about anything I thought I was going to talk about. And they just looked at me because, you know, they're thinking, well, we hired you to talk about something. Yes, they get really funky when you go off of um, what they hired you to do. Totally, girlfriend. And what I looked at them and said, because that's not what you need in this room. What you all need, and I'm going to be really candid, is you need to rekindle the spirit and the privilege of leading because you're also caught up in the negativity and the weeds of what everybody's not doing. And you are a leader, so take a look in the mirror because who you are is who they see and how you're showing up. And so that moment, Lisa, was pivotal for me because at the end of that session, I remember thinking, whoa. I remember looking up, almost like I was looking at God and said, this is where I wanna play and I wanna play more because this is what they need. Right, because it fueled you and you know, and that's, you know, you and I both, you know, uh, you know, the speaking and the state, you know, and I mean, you know, when, when you own an audience, like, you know, when, when you've got them on the edge, because, because the message matters. And, you know, and so many times, you know, they want to bring people in like you and I to speak and rah, rah, rah. Well, the rah, rah, rah is not going to change the fact that their boss is a bully or <laughs> whatever the situation is. Right. And so I love that you have just stayed, you've gone really true to what you believe and who you are. And I'm the same way now. If someone wants to hire me to speak on something that it isn't my, I won't do it. I mean, I, you know, my agents are like, oh, I'm turning it down. I'm like, but you know what? I'm, you know, my, my greatness is when I walk into my destiny, when I am on fire and I'm preaching and I believe, otherwise I'm just a speaker. I'm a commodity and they can hire someone else to do that. Amen, sister. Amen. Totally amen. And can, you know what? You just said something that I want everybody listening to hear this because this doesn't happen overnight. And I have to be honest, this took me years to figure this one out, especially when you have your own business as we do. Yes. Uh, and especially a lot of people that are listening to the show. Yeah. I was so afraid of turning down business 
because I was looking at the scarcity or worrying about what would happen if I said no. And the day I said no, because I no longer wanted to work with this toxic client, and this was years ago, I gave myself permission to start playing and serving where I can do my best work. And Lisa, it's kind of like what the books always say, right? The minute you learn how to say no, you can start saying yes to where you can be leveraged at your best. Absolutely. Because, I mean, because then at that point, you walk in your power and you're so powerful to people. Whereas if you're just going through the grind, I think about my old job, like I was going through the grind. So, you know, I wasn't in my power there at the end. And so I think it's the same, you know, for us and especially people like you and me, because we are so passion driven and we're, we're experts at what we're experts at. And I don't try to claim to do this, nor do you try to claim to do that. Like we know our lane, right? Yep. So as we start to, this just shows a little bit shorter, but as we start to wrap up, I mean, you know who the audience for this show is. They are entrepreneurs. They are leaders. They are business owners. They are sales experts. They are you know people who, who want to start selling. Because you and I both know, Holly, everybody sells for a living. I don't care what you do. If you're answering the phone, you're selling. You are the first contact to that customer. What is your piece of it? What is your Hollyism? What is What is your piece of advice that you would give to our audience out there to help them go to the next level, to help them obtain that leadership spot? that coveted spot that they think they want until they get there so many times. I might add that one too. (laughs) Oh, I love that you just said that. And can I say, I think there's a couple and I'm just so excited because these are really passionate to my heart. My mantra that I've lived by, and that's another whole story for a show we can do someday, Lisa. Yes. Tell me no, watch me go. Um, oh, it, love it. Well, and girlfriend, it would be came from being a little girl dreaming to be Julie on the love boat, right? And this whole story of everybody telling me it'll never happen the day I wanted to make it happen. And I made it happen. And what I realized is that, tell me no, watch me go. The more you're told no, look at it as a fuel, fuel that fuels you up and inspires you to go after what you really want. Because if you don't really want it, you're going to shut it down and you're going to stop. So that's my first one, because it's been my mantra that's kept me going to this day. Writing that down. Tell me no. And watch me go. Watch me go. Watch me. that. And everybody, I will post that. Look at you. You're like, yep, we're going to post that. Well, that one's a good one. But it's so easy to get caught up in letting the world, and I I trademark this one, you're going to love this one, but to stop shooting on yourself and shooting on others, S-H-O-U-L-D, you know, because we do that and we think that we shouldn't do this till we get this done or we shouldn't go do this. And as an entrepreneur, what's stopping you? Yourself. Get out of your own way. Yes. Stop letting everybody else put the hurdles and limits on you. And I'm big on emotional vampires. Be highly aware of the people you spend your valuable time with. Oh, emotional (laughs) vampires. I'm telling you, I I had Sean Thomas on right before you ask a millionaire and you know, his is, you know, most won't, but I will, you know, you know, tell me no, watch me go. I mean, again, I only bring on the greatest thought leaders, great successes and oh my gosh, emotional vampires. They suck the life out of you. Did, yes. I, did, I, did I just finish your sentence? You did. And I've I love certainly known a lot of emotional vampires, girl. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Right? Yeah. And but guess you what? Can... You get rid of them. You put those kind of people where vampires go, which is in the box, under the ground, and you're done with them forever. And don't feel guilty. No, I have zero guilt. Zero guilt. And for anybody listening, start taking yes. a, take an inventory of how you're spending your time. And you know what? Here's the big trick. Inventory how you're spending your discretionary time. You'd be amazed how many times we spend it with people we feel obligated to be with. And really, they deplete the life out of us. So start being intentional. One of the best pieces of advice I give people, Lisa, and I would say no matter what you do for a living out there, entrepreneur, leader of an organization, anything, start scheduling time intentionally to be either on a phone call like you and I, when we spend time, pick and choose the people that lift you up. Even a 30 minute phone call, have a virtual coffee or virtual wine day and spend it. Virtual wine day. We like that one. We like that one. We like that one. Well, you know what? Because it's a gift to both of you. If somebody lifts you up and inspires you, trust me, you're doing the same for them. And we need more time around people that lift us versus deplete us. So Holly, how can my audience, how, how can they work with you? Um, you know, we have all kinds, I mean, CEOs, and all kinds, how, how do they work with you? Because I want to tell everybody out there right now, if you've got the opportunity to work with my friend, this incredible woman, you need to do it. I know that you have retreats. I'm sure you've got courses. Tell us how to work with Holly Dowling. 
Oh, I love that. Well, hollydowling.com, that is the website. And there's Which a whole place. We'll post all of that. Yep. And you can put a request in there. You can totally leave us a note. That's where most of the requests for speaking of any kind come to the website. I also want you to know, you mentioned the elite retreat. I host twice a year now an elite retreat that is by nomination or invitation. It's a very exclusive experience. So love for anybody out there that's interested in falling back. And women, right? It's for women only. Women only. Okay. But here's the funny thing. I've now been asked, am I ever going to do one for men or leaders? So just letting you all know that's in the works right now. Good. Well, you, you ought to talk to our mutual friend, Sharon Lecter. You could probably do one out at her ranch. I forget. She lives right by me. She does. Yes. She I lives know. right by me. I would be at her house every night drinking wine. Well, you know, Allie and I drink wine a lot because we're only 15 minutes apart. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, the other thing, though, what I love that you just said, and this has organically happened many times, and this is now happening over and over. I'm big on sustainability, Lisa. So it's not just about show and go, right? I can come to a keynote. We can do a full day workshop, all of that. I'm all about what are we doing to keep it alive and sustain the experience and the learning. So many times now I'm doing ongoing programs, especially for leaders. You know, they'll bring their group of leaders together, kick off full day event, and then followed by maybe four to six or eight webinars and then end with the live event. So all kinds of things that are customized for your needs. Well, I, I have, uh, I, I know business leaders that have worked with you. I have a couple of personal friends that have worked with you. You're unbelievable. Um, I think that you uh, undercharge personally for, okay. for what you do, but you have a passion for it. And I, I know that. And, um, and what you do matters every single day, because I think there's a lot of leaders right now that are stuck. I mean, this is a tough world we live in and the, you turn on the news, it's bad news. It's bad news at work uh, or stock earning reports, whatever it may be. And at the end of the day, you know, you only have one time around the sun on this earth and you've mm-hmm. got to live large. You've got to do what you love with people that you love or don't do it. Get rid. I mean, Holly, I'm going to use this the rest of my life. I will give you credit. Get rid of the emotional vampires, stick them in the ground, a stake in their heart and be done with them forever. Wait, I love how you've taken the emotional vampires and now it's stick them in the ground, stick them in a box. Kill them, kill them, kill them. Yes. God, you, uh, you absolutely struck a nerve with me on that one. So anyways, that being said, that's the kind of emotion that Holly can invoke in your, in your organization. And um, I almost think you could almost like do a ritual, like stick a heart in the vampire type of thing at the end of your retreat or something. And just, Ooh, I even feel better just saying it, doing it. And now I'm done. Well, I think maybe I've got, you've gotten me inspired too, by the way, my <laughs> friend. It's like, you know what? Get ready. Here comes Holly with her vampire sword. <laughs> but, but they have to be crosses, right? Just <laughs> stakes, right? And just, yeah. Yeah. I actually have to know the first time you do that. I think, I, I think that would be an excuse to fly out. Well, maybe we'll do an event together. You write the names on the stakes of the emotional vampires in their life. Ooh, ooh, look at you. Then we could, oh, this is getting good. Well, you know what? We've always dreamed of doing something together. We've yes. always said we're going to be on stage together. Yes. Doing something. So now's our moment. We know we're going to have an, a moment that's going to happen with everybody, whether they realize it or not. <laughs> it's going to end with that. <laughs> Stay tuned for the invite to the emotional vampire funeral with Holly and Lisa. <laughs> All right, my dear, as usual, thank you so much. Everybody out there, hollydowling.com. Follow her on social media. She's an absolute rock star, the most authentic, wonderful human being you ever want to meet in your life. And my dear friend, thank you, Holly. Thank you, Lisa. I love you immensely and I miss you tons. Thank you. I 